More than half of Belize's population lives in rural settings. These 170,000 men, women and children play a vastly overlooked role in the diversified national economy. The base of the economy must, therefore, be broadened to provide a greater space for rural residents to participate more meaningfully in wealth creation. The primary objective of Belize Rural Development Program BRDP is to promote this kind of economic expansion. The beneficiaries of BRDP2 reflect on the benefits and challenges of rural life. Village life is the best part of my life. Uh, when there is no light, you know, when there is no traffic, no pollution or anything. You know, I believe you live in heaven that way. Well, I love Lucky Shrike. I love the peace of mind we you have. You they are always you know gonna do your run go to pan and you hit your line if you even catch the lamb you scrape it and you fry it and you eat it if you want. I know key how big it is. Once you go ahead the fish. Till when I meet my husband, you know where I tell her? Babe, I know I live that town. Come not live that village in me. In the villages I have um, a nice family setting, I have a yard where my children can go and play. And I like it here in the villages. Originally, I was born in Belize City, right? My parents were Angela and Gregorio Heredia. But because of Hurricane Hattie, we, my dad had already bought the place out here. So because of Hurricane Hattie, we migrated out here. I migrated at the age of 16 years old. So I, I live out here. Um, from 1961, from Hurricane Happy. When I came here, it was a village of like maybe um, 18, 20 people when everybody, all the other companies moved out. Belize Estate was the last one to go. We had, I mean, it was practically a tongueling with the amount of people and turnover that was here. Hercules and the banana industry that started and collapsed and then it started again, revived in 1971 and uh, from then on to today it's a urban business for independence and all the surrounding villages and the EU has been more than helpful in every aspect of where they can help in the banana industry. We do farming, we do coconut oil, we do kuhun oil, we do a little of everything as a farmer. Like right now we are doing the cashew, which is for the for six months. Because I think March we start to work on it, we're still working with the cashew. Which is another income with the chicken. I we collect the fruits, we sell the fruits, we sell the juice. The nuts we store them up for right now, we are doing the nuts. The fruit, we sell it just natural or we stew it, we make jam, we make jelly. The cashew juice we sell them everything do work for yourself like which most of us as you see is involving we work for ourselves so it's like you know um you come to work um like four or five hours six hours the most you could go back home and before and after in the morning you could do breakfast for your family and go back home in the evening and stuff like that it's, it's very convenient although we have our highs and you know lower season um is it's like um, your own bath. I grew up with, with my father here in San Antonio, in the, in the jungle. Um, he is a farmer and he do his own farming, he don't have no job. So that's why it's kind of hard for us, or for him to send us to school. But we, he tries his best and that's how we get our education. 
from primary to secondary schools only. They encourage me to do farming, so that's why I do farming right now, and I have my own cacao field. As a farmer, we also do our milk pot. We do corn, rice, beans, and we also grow plantain, bananas, and other fruit trees. Yeah, like right now, it's a biodiversified field I have with lone timber trees, some wood, mahogany, cedars, coconut, all in kind of citrus plants, oranges, tangerine. Then I moved to find a job in Belize City, then worked there for nine years. Then I decided to come back to San Antonio again. The difference is that um, when you're there at um, Belize City, you know, you have to buy things, you know, like village is different. Village and city is totally different. Well, the village, you know, you plant yours, you plant your own, you see what you're growing. Uh, the, the city, you can't do that. Growing up in this village was rough times, good times, all sorts of things. Uh, for, for one, going to school, we never live on this side. We used to live over the river. If you can notice the river running between, we spend like 20 odd years over that side. Then going to school, we got to wake up in the morning, use a dory, walk to school, and the road was just Picado Road, not road like this, just some little trails to go to school. And um, you couldn't be out late at night because they don't want you to be out late at night. So when you're the out late, your teachers are from outside make them all know. <laughs> when I came here, there was no electricity, no running water, no TV. So it was like, you want to say a poor way of life, but a happier way of living. Because you had this huge sea in front of you. The people are friendly, everything is homegrown. All the stuff were going, people going to the farm. Now going from here to Chicago, was a big shock. First of all, it's a huge city. You have to be on the go every single day. Um, there's no relaxing. If you don't go to work, there's no you don't make any money. One, it was cold, you <laughs> freeze compared to and the third thing was coming back and making something of happiness, and that's what we did. I came back home. A lot of people said, Why are you going home? This is all good life in Chicago. But well, why would I want to stay there when this is home? A lot of the people here are employed um, in the tourism industry, whether directly or indirectly for the most part, um, directly. Uh, but life here is, is fairly smooth and people enjoy Hopkins. Uh, leisure time, people still spend time playing their little dominoes, playing sports and things like that. So. It is much more healthy in the village, you know, it is calmer and like I said, healthier generally. We, we want drink for wee bush tea. You don't have to drink it every day, but I mean, we know we're good for we. For instance, I diagnosed with cholesterol and uh, triglycerin, but I can't, I have over two years I know I'm back to the doctor. I'm not boasting, but we're happy. I do my um, home remedy. I drink my, I drink my garlic, I drink my vinegar. You, you know you're not busy to eat fatty food, you're not eat fatty food. Why you don't fool yourself? I, I like my village life because I don't hear no gunshot. I could sleep, I could lift my bath pan and my clothes on the line and sleep so good. That's the reason why I love my village life. Uh, people find employment. People are poor to pay them. Um, pay their uh, bills because of the rules where so we have uh, employment going on in the community so the work the, that road there now we'll see more people coming into this community and we need to have more businesses because now I'm not making good business but when that road is better than how it is I will I think I will make more money before I die <laughs> I will sell more drums.